Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to Intuition. So, you guessed it, we're going to continue our NAPLEX problem solving series. In today's video, we're going to be going over colligative properties. Stay tuned. So in today's video, we're going to be answering three questions on colligative properties. All right, so let's dive into it. Question number one. Question number one states, all of the following are colligative properties except which ones? Our options are osmotic pressure, freezing point depression, specific gravity, boiling point elevation, and temperature. Well, in order for you to get this question right, you have to know what a colligative property is. A colligative property is a property that depends only on the number of solutes in a solution. So another way of saying that is that a colligative property is a property that, that changes with osmolarity. Osmolarity is the concentration of particles within a solution. And if a certain property changes as the concentration of particles within the solution changes, then that property is known as a colligative property. Now that we know what the definition of a colligative property is, we can go ahead and analyze these different options to decide which ones are not colligative properties. Okay, so let's start with the first one, osmotic pressure. Is that a colligative property? Osmotic pressure is a pressure that causes osmosis. In middle school, we learn about osmosis. And what is osmosis? Osmosis is the movement of water from an area of low concentration to an area of higher concentration. So if you have pure water on this side and you have salted water on this side, and you're just saying you separate them by a membrane, water is going to move from the pure water side to the salted side because it wants to balance the concentration of the two compartments. So water flows from low concentration to high concentration, and that's known as osmosis. And what causes osmosis is, is a difference in osmolarity between two compartments. So is osmotic pressure a colligative property? Definitely. That won't be one of the exceptions. Okay, so let's look at the second option. So second option is freezing point depression. Is that a colligative property? Yes. You know from your science background that salted water freezes at a lower temperature than pure water. Pure water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, right? That is the definition of zero degrees Celsius. Now what happens if I sprinkle some salt in that pure water? Now that becomes salted water. And if you let salted water freeze, you will notice that it doesn't freeze at zero degrees Celsius anymore. It freezes at a lower temperature. And what causes it to freeze at a lower temperature? The change in osmolarity. Whenever something changes with a change in osmolarity, it is a colligative property. So freezing point depression will also be a colligative property and it's not an exception. Three, specific gravity. Specific gravity is basically the density of an object. Density tells you the grams of the object divided by the volume of the object. So density depends on the mass of the object and the volume of the object. It does not depend on the osmolarity of the object. So if you have a solution and you wanna know what the specific gravity of the solution is, all you need to measure is how much mass, how massive is the solution, how much does it weigh, basically, divided by how much space does it take up? What is the volume of it? So the mass and the volume. It is not a colligative property. And when you look at all these answer choices, the only answer choice that includes choice three is answer B, okay? And just to make sure, B says three and five, so we look at five. Five says temperature. What is temperature? Temperature is just the, mo is the amount of molecular motion within an object, right? So if something is hot, that means that it has a lot of molecular motion. So temperature doesn't care what the osmolarity is. The temperature of an object is the temperature of the object. So temperature is also not a colligative property. So three and five are correct. Our answer to this question is answer B, three and five, okay? Question two states, a pharmacist is to compound 10 milliliters of a 2% drug-wise solution with sodium chloride. She looks into her compounding database and sees that a 1% solution of drug Y results in a 0.17 degree Celsius freezing point depression. How many milligrams of sodium chloride must she add to the 2% solution to make it isotonic? All right, so this question is a bit tricky because there is some background knowledge that you must have to be able to get this answer correct. To be able to answer this question, we need to know that normal saline, which is a 0.9% sodium chloride solution, lowers the freezing point of water by 0.52 degrees Celsius. And because freezing point depression is a colligative property, it turns out that any, any water solution 
that freezes at negative 0.52 degrees Celsius is equivalent to a normal saline solution. And a normal saline solution is an isotonic solution. So if this pharmacist wants to make isotonic solution of drug Y, she needs to make sure that it freezes at negative 0.52 degrees Celsius. A 1% solution of drug Y freezes water at negative 0.17 degrees Celsius. But we need the solution to freeze at negative 0.52. Okay, so we need to figure out how much sodium chloride must we add to get the entire solution to freeze at negative 0.52 degrees Celsius. We know that a 1% drug Y solution lowers the freezing point of water by 0.17 degrees Celsius. But the, the pharmacist is going to be making a 2% drug Y solution. So a 2% drug Y solution is going to lower the freezing point of water by 0.34 degrees Celsius. Okay, good. All right, so we're close. So the 2% of drug Y is going to lower the freezing point by 0.34. But that's not enough, right? We need the freezing point to be lowered by 0.52. So how much are we short? We do 0.52 minus 0.34 and we get 0.18. So we're short 0.18 degrees Celsius. So we need to further lower the freezing point by 0.18 degrees Celsius. How do we do that? Well, we need to add more particles. Now we're going to be adding sodium chloride particles. And how many milligrams of sodium chloride must we add? A 0.9% sodium chloride solution will lower the freezing point by 0.52, but we need it to be lowered by 0.18. So we multiply this by 0.18 degrees Celsius. And what do we get? We get 0.31% sodium chloride. So this solution is gonna be a 2% drug Y solution and a 0.31% sodium chloride solution. A 0.31% sodium chloride solution is 0.31 grams of sodium chloride over 100 milliliters. Okay, that's the definition of percent. And what is the total volume of the solution that we're making? We are making 10 milliliters of this solution. So we multiply this quantity by 10. We need 0.031 grams of sodium chloride multiplying by a thousand and that's 31 milligrams. So in order to make this solution isotonic, we have to add 31 milligrams of sodium chloride. And our answer would be answer choice C. All right, so now question three. Okay, the third question states, as stated, a 1% drug Y solution causes a freezing point depression of 0.17 degrees Celsius. If drug Y is a neutrally charged small molecule, what are its expected molecular weight and E value? The molecular weight of sodium chloride is 58.4. Okay, so this is a continuation of the previous problem that we've had, right? We're being asked to find the molecular weight and the E value of drug Y. First, we need to know what the molecular weight and E value are. The molecular weight of sodium chloride is 58.4. What does that mean? That means that I would have to weigh out 58.4 grams of sodium chloride to have one mole of sodium chloride particles. Okay, that's what molecular weight is. E value is the mass of sodium chloride that is equivalent to one gram of another compound. If one gram of drug Y results in a certain amount of particles, what we want to find is the mass of sodium chloride that will result in the same amount of particles. And that mass is called the E value. Well, to find the E value, all we have to do is take a certain mass of sodium chloride that results in a certain number of particles and divide that by the equivalent mass of drug Y that would result in the same amount of particles. So we know that normal saline, which is a 0.9% sodium chloride solution, results in a freezing point depression of 0.52. So a 0.29% of sodium chloride will lower the freezing point of water by 0.17 degrees Celsius. Now, why do we do that? We do that because now we can do a equivalent comparison between sodium chloride and drug Y because, because we know that a 1% solution of drug Y lowers the freezing point of water by 0.17 degrees Celsius. And remember, the extent to which you lower the freezing point of water is directly, is directly related to the amount of particles in solution, which means that a 0.29% solution of sodium chloride results in the same number of particles as a 1% solution of drug Y. So now we just need to take the ratio of 0.29 and one, and we get 0.29 as the E value. 
okay? So one gram of drug Y is equivalent to 0.29 grams of sodium chloride. Now we just need to solve for the molecular weight of drug Y. How do we do that? We utilize the formal definition of the E value. In the numerator, you put the mass of sodium chloride that results in one mole of particles divided by the mass of the drug that re also results in one mole of particle. What is the mass of sodium chloride that will give us one mole of particle? You, you might say it's the molecular weight, right? That's kind of true, but not, but not quite. Why? Because remember, 58.4 grams of sodium chloride gives us one mole of sodium chloride. But remember, sodium chloride can dissociate. Sodium chloride can, add, can stay together and remain one particle, or it can break up into sodium and chloride and give us two particles. So even though you have one mole of sodium chloride, you can actually have more than one mole of particles. And in fact, sodium chloride breaks up or dissociates in solution to the extent that, to the extent that the molecular weight of sodium chloride, instead of giving us one mole of particle, it gives us 1.8 moles of particle because 80% of the sodium chloride dissociate in solution. So in the numerator, we want to put the amount of mass of sodium chloride that gives us one mole of particle. What would that be? That will be the molecular weight divided by 1.8. Okay, so in the numerator, we have 58.4 divided by 1.8. And in the numerator, what do we have? Well, we have to put the amount of mass of drug Y that will give us one mole of drug Y particles. And what is that? Well, that would just be the molecular weight because unlike sodium chloride, we're being told that drug Y is a small molecule that's neutrally charged, which means that it's not a salt. It's not in combination with another molecule that can dissociate. The molecular weight of drug Y gives us one mole of drug Y particles because drug Y does not dissociate. We put the molecular weight of drug Y. This ratio is going to be equal to the E value, which is 0.29. And now we just need to solve for the molecular weight. So we multiply both sides by the molecular weight and divide both sides by 0.29. And when we solve for the molecular weight, what do we get? We get 111.88, which is approximately 112. Our answer choice is choice C. The molecular weight is 112 and the E value is 0.29. And that's how you solve this problem. I hope that this video was understandable for you guys and that you actually learned something from it. Uh, these problems that we just did today are pretty advanced and they're, and they're probably the toughest type of calculation problems that you face on this exam. So uh, make sure you study it. Make sure you understand. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. Uh, keep watching out for the videos that we release every week. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye-bye.